What's up, Magic players? It's Doyle, your host here on Doyle Prime MTG, where I bring you the latest and greatest in Magic content that I can while still trying to have a life. This week, I'm building a deck for my fiancé. Her favorite color is green, so I figured green-white would be a great jumping-off point for her. This is the first of three deck techs that I've decided to make her, so let's jump into it. Forests, islands, mountains, plains, and swamps. The multiverse is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. There is a tingling in the spine, a faint sensation, as if a distant memory of walking from plane to plane. Our lives have been forever changed, as if by magic. Embark with me on this journey to eternity. Experience the true power of mind over matter, as we ignite your spark and traverse into the Magic Multiverse. Hamza, Guardian of Erishin, is very straightforward. An elephant guardian that makes even the largest of creatures ridiculously easy to cast. For 4 green white, we get a legendary 5-5 elephant warrior that costs X less to cast, where X is the number of creatures that we control with plus 1 plus 1 counters on them. And it has creature spells that we cast cost X less to cast, where X is the number of creatures that we control with plus 1 plus 1 counters on them. This deck is really easy to pilot because it builds around creatures that generally independently have these plus one plus one counters on them and or give the counters or some number of counters to some number of creatures that we control. These creatures will end up being quite inexpensive to cast since we mostly won't be pairing that generic part of their mana cost. And they can lead to very explosive turns in which you are casting many creature spells, preparing for victory. First up, we need to ramp because our commander will not be out on the field the entire time, so we should make sure that we can cast all of our spells, regardless of the discount. We will start with a suite of mana dorks for turn 1 rampage. Avacyn's Pilgrim, Birds of Paradise, Elvish Mystic, Findhorn Elves, and Lanawar Elves will each generate us an additional mana each turn, helping propel us into our strong tusks much quicker. We also have a few mana generating creatures that cost 2 mana with Gyre Sage, Incubation Druid, and Sakura Tribe Elder. These will keep us on curve and caught up with the rest of the table, while two of these can eventually generate us multiple mana each turn. The best scenario in a game is having a turn 1 single mana producing creature to give us 3 mana on turn 2. This will allow us to cast Farhaven Elf or Wood Elves which would bring out an extra land card from our library onto the battlefield whenever these creatures enter the battlefield. In this scenario, we could also even cast Cultivate or Kodama's Reach, which not only search for a land from our library and put it onto the battlefield, but also replaces themselves with an extra land in our hands. Cryptic Trilobite and Crystalline Crawler will each enter with some of these plus one plus one counters on them, and can each also remove those counters to generate mana for casting spells. Rishgar Pima Renegade can also help us to ramp. He can allow the creatures that we control with plus one plus one counters on them to tap for green mana. Not to mention, he also helps give a couple of those counters when he enters play. Fertilid can ramp us by sacrificing its counters in order to tutor more basic lands into play. Finally, for ramp, we will end this section with Karametra, God of Harvests. This indestructible god will reward us with bountiful harvests each time we cast a creature spell by finding us either a forest or a plains from our library and putting it into the battlefield tapped. We can even ramp using some lands. With Crows and Verge, Blighted Woodland, and Myriad Landscape, each of these lands can sacrifice themselves to bring two lands from our library into play. Next up, we have to make sure that we have cards or spells to spend all this mana on. Drawing cards is one of the most powerful things to do in Magic the Gathering. Beginning our card draw section, I'd like to announce Path of Discovery. This functions in two ways for this deck. First, it can draw us land cards if they are on top of our library, or it can put 1-1 counters on our creatures as they enter. Both of these outcomes are quite favorable in this deck. We also have Shamanic Revelation and Inspiring Call. 
Each of these will draw us a card for each creature that we control. Even though the call is limited only to those with 1-1 one -one counters on them, that will still be most of the creatures that we use in this deck. Similarly, we have Rishgar's Expertise and Return of the Wild Speaker. Each of these will draw us cards equal to the power of our largest creature. Assuming that's Hamza, that's five cards off of one spell. We will be casting so many creature spells, so Beast Whisperer and Primordial Sage will each help us draw cards each time that we cast a creature spell. Also, Guardian Project and Soul of the Harvest can help us draw cards when those non-token creatures enter play. Finally, we have Armor Craft Judge, which draws us a card when it enters play for each creature that we control with a 1-1 counter on it. Each of these draw sources are quite powerful, so let's find some control spells to allow us to use our card advantage to govern the play space. Let us begin with a couple of classics, Beast Within and Generous Gift. Each of these will permanently remove one of our opponent's powerful permanents and replace it with a measly 3-3 beast creature token. Winds of Abandon can also permanently remove a creature, or if we overload it, all of the creatures that we don't control will be put into exile. Even though those creatures controllers can search for basic lands out of their deck, they're still not going to enjoy the one-sidedness of this board wipe. Dromoka's Command will help us in a number of ways, giving us four options from which we can choose two effects. The Azalith will keep our counters around even if the creatures die. Genesis Hydra enters the battlefield with many counters on it. It can also cheat something into play off of the top X cards of our library. Steelbane Hydra can also help us by using its plus one plus one counters to remove artifacts and enchantments from our opponent's battlefields. Basri's Lieutenant will give us a bit of board wipe protection, replacing our creatures that die with token creatures, so long as the non-token ones that died had plus one plus one counters on them. Shalai, Voice of Plenty, will help protect us from single target removal, as well as giving us an outlet to put 1-1 one -one counters across our board. Temur Sabretooth will allow us the ability to reuse all of our ETB triggers, and also to save some creatures from removal. Eternal Witness will drag up a card from our grave into our hand upon entering the battlefield. And the Knight of Autumn and Reclamation Sage each have the ability to destroy target artifact or enchantment upon entering play. Each of these will be invaluable with the Sabertooth in play. Finally, we lurch onward toward victory, finding those spells that will help us close out the game. We want to focus on creature combat here, so we will go wide with tokens while we go tall with across-the-board buff counters. Going wide, we have a Hangerback Walker, which gets tall and then generates us an enormous amount of flyers when it dies. Iridescent Horn Beetle will give us token creatures each turn, equal to the number of counters that get placed on our creatures that turn. And Avenger of Zendikar can produce an enormous amount of plant tokens. And additionally, it can give us a conduit for giving those tokens counters. Going tall and growing our board, we have Stone Coil Serpent, which grows very tall, and also has protection from multicolored and reach. Mist Cutter Hydra grows tall with protection from blue, haste, and can't even be countered. We can threaten the blue player at the table with this card. Micaeus the Lunark can enter large and distribute counters across our board each turn. Conclave Mentor will add an extra counter each time that one of our creatures gets counters put on them. Forgotten Ancient will gather counters and then distribute them accordingly at our upkeep. Loyal Guardian will spread a 1-1 counter to each creature we control at our combat step. Evolution Sage and Sword of Truth and Justice will each allow us to proliferate. The Sage will let us when lands enter our battlefield, and the Sword on a combat damage trigger. Each trigger giving an extra counter to each creature that already has at least one. Good Fortune Unicorn, Bloodspore Thrynax, and Juniper Order Ranger will each ensure that all of our creatures are entering the battlefield with plus one plus one counters already on them. Felidar Retreat and Kather's Crusade will each also spread plus one plus one counters across the board. 
The retreat will do so on a land ETB, and the crusade will trigger on each creature ETB. The retreat also gives us the option to go wide with tokens instead. Colonian Hydra and Vigor will be the biggest threats in the deck, generating an untold amount of plus one plus one counters each turn. Last but not least, we also have some creatures that give abilities to all of our creatures who have these counters. Inok Bonkin will give them all first strike. Abzan Falconer can give them all flying. Champion of Lamholt can make them all unblockable. Pride Malkin and Tuskard Captain can each give our creatures trample. And Abzan Battlefriest will give them lifelink. Watch out for those trample and first strike abilities, especially when paired with Bow of Nylia, which gives our attacking creatures death touch. If you're unsure how first strike and trample interact with death touch, tune into some of my later views, or especially hit that subscribe button, where I will start making videos that talk about gameplay aspects, corner cases, and decision making. For lands, I have included Gavany Township and Karn's Bastion to increase our board size. And also a suite of Selesnia color fixing lands with Canopy Vista, Command Tower, Selesnia Sanctuary, Sun Petal Grove, Temple Garden, and Temple of Plenty, leaving us room for 15 forests and 8 plains. That about wraps it up for this deck tech. I hope you enjoyed the video. You'll find the link to the full deck list on Archidec.com in the description, complete with a maybe board. Let me know in the comments below if you could take this deck in a different direction, or if there are any key includes that I missed. Cheers, and happy casting! If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button, and also share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like these, or hear me ramble about how to navigate this magic multiverse, go ahead and click that subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest from me, Doyle Prime, and the happenings throughout Magic the Gathering. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next video.